Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Um, I just want to address something because it seemed to come up a lot in the comments on Monday's video. For those of you who only read the title and not really watched the whole video of our announcement on Friday, we are not leaving South Africa right this very moment. We still have a couple of weeks left. In fact, my son is in the hospital right now, unable to travel. And while that's still going on, we're going to make as many videos as we can for you, especially as we're trying to wrap things up here in South Africa. So things are changing, but Friday's video wasn't the last video we were ever recording. It was an announcement to be prepared for the future and how things are going to change. A lot of you seem to understand that, but just for those of you who didn't understand what uh, is exactly going on, we're still releasing videos. My son's in the hospital. He is doing better. It looks like he should be out in the next few days. And then we can work on getting my wife back to the States. And then I will follow her shortly with our two older boys after that. But everything's up in the air until our son gets home from the hospital because he's not stable enough to fly at this moment. So just a bit of housekeeping before we start hot news. And also before we start hot news, we gotta talk about today's video sponsor. When you're buying things out on the internet, you need to make sure that you're protected. That's where today's sponsor, privacy.com, comes into play because just like you shouldn't be using the same password everywhere on every single website, you also shouldn't be using the same card number. Privacy.com will allow you to actually generate new card numbers for every retailer that you could possibly want in every use case. You can set it up to be a single use card or you could have it on a recurring setup for your Spotify or Netflix subscription. And that way, if a company gets hacked, you'll know first because you'll see that card got charged. But oh wait, there's no money there because you're protected by Privacy.com. And if you go to the link in the video description, Privacy.com forward slash UFD, you'll save $5 off with your first purchase with them. Five free dollars. So check it out, protect yourself, and get some extra money. It, this privacy.com is a great sponsor. Protect yourself out on the internet, friends. Link's in the video description. Okay, so let's jump on into it because today's episode is basically nearly 75% AMD related because there's been a ton of news coming out about the latest releases that we should be seeing from AMD. One of the big ones is the Ryzen 5 3500 and 3500X. These are gonna be the like $150, $120 chips depending on it's the X or non X model. And there's been plenty of leaks coming out. It looks like we have an official AMD slide showing it performing the 3500X, specifically outperforming the Intel i5-9400F, which is a $140 chip on Amazon right now. And it looks like the 3500X is beating it in a lot of games. And it's not only AMD slides that's showing that, there's apparently a Chinese reviewer who posted a video on Bilibili, did a review of the 3500X, showing that indeed, yes, it does outperform the i5-9400. 100F uh, by about up to 5% in many games. So obviously pricing is going to be what would set these two apart as far as value for the performance that you're getting. So we'll have to see what the official announcement is with regards to price, but there have been uh, pictures of the CPU posted out on the internet. There's been a full review and there's also been motherboard updates that have been coming out, specifically MSI added support for the 3500X. So if you've been rating for an even cheaper setup for Ryzen 3000, it looks like the 3500X should be launching sometime soon. And on top of that, it also looks like the B550 chipset should be launching soon as well, potentially as soon as October with details around that being released. B550 is going to be notably different from X570 because it won't feature any PCI Express 4.0 slots. So you won't be able to take advantage of that, but it's supposed to be the more budget value oriented um, deal with that. So B550 potentially launching in October, even though previously our sources have told us that it was gonna be in the first quarter of 2020, but sooner is obviously better. And then there was a lot of leaks coming out about new Navi cards coming out in October as well. Navi 12 and Navi 10 appearing in Linux Mesa drivers showing up, which could indicate that they're coming out, but it necessarily doesn't mean that because it, I mean, driver updates to Linux could mean that things are coming a while from now. However, when you combine that with the fact that the RX 5500 has seen benchmarks posted to GFX bench, it kind of appears to be a bit more likely that it's going to happen. The benchmarks on GFX Bench make the RX 5500 right around the performance of a decent RX 570, which 
is good. It's not going to blow anything out of the water and it's supposed to be a lower tier card. So mainly the things that are going to differentiate it are obviously the cost. What is an RX 5500 going to come in price wise? But then also this should be on seven nanometers. So you're going to have better power efficiency. So better power efficiency would mean better thermals and less noise. So we'll see how that develops. But it's not the only RX card that has appeared because there are some OEM desktops from HP that have been listed out on the internet with the B550 chipset and an RX 3700 XT with a release date in October. However, because these are OEM systems, there is a lot of speculation out on the internet that the 5300 XT actually isn't seven nanometer technology at all. It has nothing to do with Navi. It's actually just another rebrand of the RX uh, 500, 400 series. So it could be an RX 550 or an RX 560 rebranded into the new RX 5000 series naming scheme. Obviously, we don't have enough information at this point to say whether or not that's true, but that is one of the options that plenty of people on the internet are stating. And one of the things that slightly backs that up is that it's using four gigabytes of GDDR5 instead of GDDR6, which would make sense for a lower end Navi card, but we also don't have evidence at this point that Navi will be on DDR5. It's only on DDR6 at this moment. It's not impossible, it's just there's a bunch of clues to weigh it out on either side. And then one thing that we didn't report in hot news because we posted the announcement video about the fact that my family has to move back to the United States and that's AMD announced that the 3950X has been delayed from September to November and they're saying that this is so that they can get volume production going. However, there is a report coming out from people who are in the industry saying that it actually has nothing to do with volume production and it has everything to do with the fact that the 3950X cannot hit the clock speeds that AMD has already stated and that they're struggling to get it to the point where it's stable at the clock speeds listed, which to be fair, wouldn't be unprecedented for the current Ryzen 3000 launch where there have been clock speed controversies, but AMD delaying it so that they can have it ready rather than and launch something that cannot do the 4.7 gigahertz boost that they're quoting on this 16 core CPU. And then another rumor that has come out regarding AMD CPUs, but not applying to this generation, but rather to the next generation of Zen 3, is that there is anticipation that their Epic server CPUs would actually go from being two threads for every core using simultaneous multi-threading, all the way up to four threads per core. So a 64 core chip would then have 256 threads on a server environment. And there's a lot of places in server applications where this could be super helpful. For gaming, not really. There's tons of evidence showing that if you even disable SMT on Ryzen chips, you're going to get a more stable gaming performance than if you have hyper-threading, which is Intel's branded term for it, on. So this probably won't make its way to you know a Ryzen 4000 series Ryzen 5 chip, but it could be useful in very select data center applications, which is why it might be one of the reasons AMD is looking to implement it. But all of the new news and hullabaloo about AMD probably would not be happening if it weren't for the person who's been at the helm of the company for quite some time now, that is Dr. Lisa Su, and she was just named one of the most powerful women in business, which obviously is due to her turning around AMD, basically recovering a sinking ship and now making it competitive with Intel and making it a force to be reckoned with. So congratulations to Dr. Lisa Su, one of the most powerful women in business. And then the last piece of AMD news and then we're going to transition into a few other articles, is that there is some information about the new Surface laptop that should have AMD processors in it, starting off with the Ryzen 5 3550U coming in at $1,000. However, there's indication that they're not going to stop with the current lineup of Ryzen U series processors, because in case you're not familiar, the Ryzen 7 3750U is only four cores and eight threads. There appears to be indication that the Surface laptop might get an eight core chip from Ryzen in their Microsoft devices, which would be quite incredible, although unprecedented because AMD has not said a single word about this. So take that leak with a huge grain of salt. We'll see if it comes out, but if it does, it could be super competitive with what Intel has in the mobile department. Speaking of Microsoft devices, Windows 10 has been announced to have been installed on over 900 million devices. That's cray cray. This obviously includes things such as laptops and desktops. So Microsoft gets to spy on over 900 million people. 
Good job. Make sure to disable all of your tracking data. And then the last little bit of Windows laptop news, the Razer Blade Pro 17 is apparently getting a 4K 120 hertz monitor. That is insane. Why do you need 4K on a 17 inch monitor? Reasons. 120 hertz is appreciated though. However, it is going to set you back a pretty penny with the 4K 120 hertz version starting at $3,700. The cheapest 1080p 144 hertz, on the other hand, is only $2,500. Only. Um, it's not necessarily cheap, but there you go. And then Corsair with Elgato revealed their new capture card. The HD 60 S plus has been revealed. It has a few key improvements over the HD 60 S, which includes 1080p 60 FPS HDR capture, as well as 4k 60 HDR pass through. Whereas, uh, the previous HD 60 S did not do, uh, HDR in those capacities. So if you need HDR, capture card capabilities, the HD 60S Plus might be the thing you want. And then if you need wicked fast RGB external storage, Asus has the thing for you. It's the ROG Strix Arian M.2 NVMe SSD enclosure. As you can see, it's RGB, but it also has speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second for incredibly fast external storage. It can fit most M.2 NVMe drives. You likely will be fine with any NVMe drive. You don't have to necessarily go for the PCI Express 4.0. In fact, it would be wasted if you did that. So. That, that's going to be nice. And then if you didn't hear, Nintendo launched the Switch Lite on Friday, the 20th of September, and iFixit posted their teardown of the device, showing that indeed Nintendo has made some changes to the Joy-Con. However, it's not yet clear whether or not it's going to be fixing the drift issues that have plagued the Nintendo Switch, the original version, on many of the right Joy-Cons. Reese has one that the right Joy-Con has borked on. My son's Switch that I bought them like two years ago. Uh, uh, all of the controllers that are right Joy-Cons have, have been borked. So it seems to be a very common issue anecdotally. And then also there's been some evidence published that it's, it's a real thing. So we'll see if the Switch Lite does suffer from it. It appears that most of the changes have to do with the fact that the Lite is smaller, not necessarily that they made quality of life improvements. Speaking of quality of life improvements, I'm going to increase the quality of your life by ending this episode of Hot News right there. Don't forget to check out today's video sponsor, privacy.com. They're an amazing company that makes sure that you're safe on the internet when you're browsing. They make, they've protected millions of people. They have everything that you could possibly need to make sure that your card is protected and you're not getting no scammies and you're not being overcharged. And in case you sign up for like free trials, you're not going to be screwed over by forgetting because you can make sure that the card doesn't have any money on it. Yes. Except for that five free dollars you get by going to the link in the video description. Do, to do it. And to also hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video of hot news, get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. And once again, I just want to thank everybody for the insane in amount of support that has come through. Our announcement video is over a million views in four days. That is the third video on this channel to hit a million views. I had no idea that everybody would be responding this way. And it just, it, it means the world to us that you guys care. And I appreciate that you guys are going to stick with us on this journey. If you keep supporting us, the options for moving the business there increase, being able to afford the experience of getting visas and moving the team over there is a reality now where it was not when we made that video. And so, um, I'm much more hopeful going into the future. Thanks to you guys. And you've taken a huge burden off of me that I was not able to lift myself. And I, I'm super thankful for the tech community. And my wife and I will still make a formal thank you as soon as our son's out of the hospital. So probably next week. Anyways, I'm getting out of here. Not going to do the soft, spongy Bret Hart thing anymore. Cheers. And then over the weekend, or not over the weekend, I kept, I keep thinking it's the weekend because freaking yesterday was a public holiday. I thought today was Saturday yesterday. Anyways. Stop calling me out. I'm never going to put the pieces back together if you wanted me to get better. It's been stuck in my head all weekend.